Hi there, Rob here, and I'm going to take you through drawing some interesting shapes by using rotations, alignments, uh, sort of working, breaking up and combining shapes together and other various fun things. Uh, I need to get myself a couple of guides. I'm going to work on a horizontal and a vertical axis. So I've got myself a horizontal guide here already, and I want to be able to move this. So if I go to the view menu, under my guides menu and you can see my guides are locked at the moment so if I click on the lock guides that will unlock that guide there I can move it around I want to actually set it to a decent number and the guides are set from the left hand side on the x-axis so if I come up here to the control bar and you can see well 98.022 I'll just knock that up a couple of times to make it round 100 and then I will go and get a guide from the horizontal ruler at the top just drag it down drop it somewhere roughly there and then if I click on it to select it and the y-axis up and down if I just set that to be 150 and I'll just type in 150 hit enter and there's my guides my horizontal and vertical because I want to work from that center so just to make sure I don't accidentally move the guides again I'll go to the view menu into guides and I'll lock those guides and if I just move that, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to start off with the basic square shape. So if I come into the get the rectangle tool and I'll just click on the intersection of the two axes, I'll hold down the Alt key and the Shift key just to drag out like that. Although I really want to set this to be a particular size, so probably about 50 millimeters square. So if I come up to the control bar and I'll type in 50 here, if I want it to stay a square, make sure that this icon here, this constraint chain link type icon is selected like that so it's a whole link and I'll just type in 50 in there if I hit enter you can see it's automatically done the other side and at the moment there's no shape there or no shape visible because my stroke and my fill are both none so if I just go and choose a black stroke and I'll just set that to be a half a millimeter zoom in a little bit and ready to work and I'm going to just break up this shape a little bit so I'm going to get the direct selection tool and click away so I've got no selection and then go and click on that anchor point in the corner and I'm going to drag that across the shape towards the opposite corner to make a kind of arrow head if I hold down the shift key the movement is going to be constrained along the 45 degree axis so if I get to about there that looks okay if I'm happy with that then I'll go and get my main selection tool, select the entire object. I'm going to move that up so it intersects with the axes there. And I can see exactly where my shape is based on uh, the control bar here. So I've got my reference point, which the reference point refers to this actual shape here. So the middle that's highlighted there refers to the center of the whole object there not this part of the object the whole bounding box the whole width the longest and at highest dimensions if I wanted to set this reference point here I just click on the bottom right hand corner and it tells me that that is at 100 and 150 now I want to have a bit of a space between the two so what I'm going to do is just use the down arrow on the X to move it four millimeters and the down arrow on the Y to move it up four millimeters so a nice space there in fact maybe slightly closer in there excellent so what I'm going to do is flip this shape across reflect it across both axes so I want to have four versions of these shape this shape here so I'm just going to select that shape come over here and now my reflection tool if I click and hold on the rotate tool the reflect tool is there that's selected there and I want to set which of the two axes I want to reflect along so it doesn't matter where on the axis I actually click but if I hold down the alt key and you can see there's a little kind of dotted line appeared next to my target cursor there if I go and click on the vertical axis anywhere it will do and the reflect box will come up at the moment it's saying it will reflect on the horizontal of where I clicked I want it to be the vertical and you can see because I've got my preview option selected here it's showing me a preview of what that 
reflection will do. That's exactly what I want to do. But I want to make a copy of it. So I'll click on the copy button. And there we go. And then all I want to do is the same thing for both of those shapes. So if I click and drag across them both, go back to the reflect tool. This time I want to set my reflection on the horizontal axis. And again, I can click anywhere on that, but I need to hold down the Alt key, click, and then change the axis to be horizontal. Again, copy, and there I've got four of my shapes. So that's the first part. Now what I'm going to do is go and grab myself an ellipse and I'm going to draw a circle from the middle. So again, Alt and Shift held down together on the keyboard and I can draw out from the middle there. If I want to finesse the actual size of the shape, I can uh, change the uh, values here, the width and the height. So a handy thing with Adobe software is when you select a number in any of these uh, entry fields. If you use the arrow keys on the keyboard, so the up, down, left and right arrows, you can actually increase the value of the number and you can see how it affects the measurements and the uh, measurements of your actual uh, object that you're working on. So that's quite helpful. So I'll get that to a reasonable size. 36 seems to be it. Hit enter or just click on the pasteboard. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is actually merge all of these shapes together to start with. So I'm going to go and get my Pathfinder panel and I'm going to select all of the shapes. So I'll get my black selection tool and just drag across all of them to select them. And I'm going to use the Unite button. So this is going to unify or unite all of these shapes together. And that's what we get. So they've all been united nicely there. Now I want to take this and I want to do some reflections, or not some reflections, sorry, some rotations to add some extra versions of this. So what I'm going to do is go back to where I have my reflect tool, click and hold to get the rotate tool. Now my rotation axis is the middle there. I could alt and click to bring up the rotate box, or if my rotation point is in the middle of my shape, which it is by default here, I can just double click on the tool and it's already previewing the rotation and there's the angle of rotation and again I can edit that or adjust it just by up and down with the keyboard arrows I'll go for 30 degrees to start with so it's 30 degrees that way and I'm going to go back and select the original shape and then go again, double click on the rotate tool. This time I'm going to go minus 30 and copy that. And there we go. Now, a bit of a mess that shape at the moment, but when I select all three of those shapes together that I've created and I unify them again, something a little bit more clean. Now, this might not be the greatest piece in the world, but it's more about showing you some of the techniques that you can experiment with yourself. So again, using the Pathfinder, Rotate and things like that, you know, go nuts, experiment, try a few things out and fun things like this. So I'm just going to dive in and go to one of these points here at the end and I'll use that as a basis to put a little shape on the end. I think maybe I'll go with a circle. Now if I hover over there at the end point there it highlights exactly where the end of that shape is. So if I hold down my Alt key and click and drag and hold Shift as well it'll draw a circle from the center on top of that point there. Now if I want to go for a particular size I can come up to the control bar and just alter that and I want to fill that with white just so it highlights that there. So what I want to do is have one of these on the end of every one of these points. Now they're not in a regular position however these two are repeated all the way around. So there's 12 pairs of these kind of forks coming out here. So what I'm going to do is draw another circle from a point the other side of that pair there. So hold down the Alt key when I've got the anchor point underneath, Shift, 
and then I'll just alter that so it's five millimeters exactly the same. So what I want to do is rotate and copy these pairs of circles all the way around. So what I'm going to do is select them both. So click on the first one, hold down the shift key, click on the second one. I'm going to group these together just to make it easier to use. You can see on the layers panel, there are actually two separate ellipses at the moment. What I'll do, I'll right click and choose group. And now you can see they're one group. If I click on one of them, or move them, they'll both move together. Just undo that. So to get these to rotate around, they'll rotate around the center. And hopefully if I'll get my positioning right, they should rotate onto each one of these going around 30 degrees at a time. So select the objects, go and get my rotate tool. And you can see how the rotate target the center of rotation there is in the middle of those shapes, in the middle of that group. I'm going to Alt and click where the guides intersect there. That's my center point for the shape. And you can see already I just happen to have 30 or well, minus 30 degrees from a previous rotation. And you see how they've rotated perfectly onto those next two points. So I'm going to copy that. Now, rather than keep doing that over and over again, I can use a nice shortcut in Illustrator. If you go to the object menu, under the transform menu, there's this option called transform again. And the shortcut, command D or control D on the PC. What that will do is make that same transformation again, every time I hit that option. Now the transformation was to rotate and copy those two circles. So if I select transform again, it's moved them on again. And what I'll do rather than going up to the menu each time, I'll just do command D to fire that off each time. And as I go around, there we go. Now, this may not be the most dynamic, amazing shape in the world, but I hope you can agree, it does illustrate some rather nice techniques. I will join these all together, and I'll unite them again. There we go. And then I'm going to copy this entire shape and reduce it so it's inside itself again. So I can make a perfect duplicate of that by going to the edit menu and copy or control C and edit menu and paste in front and that will paste an exact copy on top. And then all I want to do is just reduce that down. So if I go to my top right hand corner here, hold down the shift and the alt key so the shift keeps it constrained and the Alt key keeps it moving from the center. I'll just move it like that. And I'm not going to keep it in that position. I'm going to rotate it slightly. So if I double click on the rotate, and I know that the rotation point is going to appear in the center of that object, which is centered around those axes. So I don't need to worry about moving that. And I don't want it to be 30 degrees. I want it to be in between the two. So 15 degrees on OK. I might want to go back and enlarge that slightly. Like I say, this might not be the most beautiful piece in the world, but in terms of illustrating what can be done, and I'll do that one more time as well. So I'll go and edit, copy, edit, paste in front, reduce it down right into small size there. And then if I double click on the rotate tool or the rotate rotate box will come up and again 15 degrees okay and I'm just going to enlarge that slightly more so it fits in like that so I can keep working with this in fact it might even work enlarging that slightly to there and do the same in with that now like I say this might not be the most amazing piece of work in the world but you can see how just by starting off with that really basic square I mean I'm literally just used two shapes a square and a circle just by altering them slightly combining joining together you can see how the rotation and the reflection and the uniting of the shapes can come up with some quite interesting pieces